Good morning. I hope everyone's having a great morning. I am Mr. H. Thank you for joining me. A volume a day keeps the doctor away is what I say. And here we have a volume question. Y equals X minus X squared, a parabolic function. We have intervals here from 1 over 2 to 3 over 2 and we're rotating it around a vertical line of axis x equals 2. If anyone would be hoping to do this by the disc or the washer, the traditional method, you would have to convert this in form of x equals equation because you have a vertical line of axis and you couldn't because you couldn't cleanly or clearly isolate x and make everything with regards to x equals equation. Therefore, you have to think about a cylindrical shell technique. When you do this curve and the interval 1 over 2 to 3 over 2 and you rotate it on the axis, this is the solid that forms. So I am already showing you the three-dimensional solid that forms. What we need to do is examine this in terms of its anatomy. We're looking at minus x squared plus x. When you're looking at that, you're looking at a parabolic function or a quadratic equation. You have minus pushed out, you have x squared minus x. You can do completing by the square and you do it. You have a over 2 and then a square, you have a plus 1 over 4 equals minus 1 over 4 because it multiplies, goes on the other side. You have a minus x minus 1 over 2 whole square plus 1 over 4 and that tells you the vertex here is 1 over 2 comma 1 over 4. A parabolic equation, parabolic function with a curve downwards. In terms of appearance you have a vertex 1 over 2 comma 1 over 4. This is 1 that's one here's two we're looking at a half over here and a quarter right here that's the vertex here but if you look at this equation right here and you solve for x x is equal to in terms of everything being zero you'll isolate here a minus x plus one here you'll find out x is equal to zero and one those are your x intercepts zero comma zero and a one comma zero and your curve would look your parabolic curve would look like that a vertex here at half comma one over four and that's exactly what we're looking at when we're looking here at this 1 over 2 to 3 over 2, if this is 2 over here, my 3 over 2 is here, my half is here, I'm really looking at this portion right over here in terms of the shading. Part of it is below the parabolic curve and above the x-axis, the other portion is below the x-axis but above the parabolic curve. And that's exactly what's going to rotate now around this x equals line x equals 2 line so you're seeing that based on the interval you have from 1 over 2 to 1 you have some portion below the curve and then from 1 up to 3 over 2 you have some portion above the curve and you have to keep all of that into account when you do this specific volume determination so let's do it now that we have everything here presented with regards to the items which i'll put down here for you we know we have a vertex here at 1 over 2 comma 1 over 4 we know we have x intercepts at 0 comma 1 which may or may not even be relevant now what we can do is remove this because i want to start developing the equation form if this right here is x equals 2 and i'm looking at a portion of a curve and nothing is drawn here to scale like this i have a riemann rectangle which will be here below the curve and I'll have a certain Riemann rectangle here which will be above the curve because I'm doing cylindrical shell technique. When I'm going to look in this direction I'm going to do in terms of radius 2 minus x because remember the volume determination here will have some sort of a circumference component, it'll have some sort of a height component and it'll have a dx, a thickness component, all of that has to be determined. And then I have another radius here 2 minus x. So in all instances the circumference will be 2 pi times radius 2 minus x. Now I have to look at the height of each of these rectangles based on what interval I'm at and I'm removing this. Remember we're looking here from 1 over 2 to 3 over 2. These are x equals 1 over 2, x equals 3 over 2 and y equals x minus x squared. These are the functions which delimit the region of this portion that's going to revolve around this x equals 2 line. So let's erase this. You have the solid here in your mind and you've seen it. From an interval 1 over 2 to 1. From 1 over 2 all the way up to this 1, this intersection point after which the rectangle flips in terms of its orientation with your curve. From that we have a radius over here or we, let's just say circumference is a 2 pi times 2 minus x. But we have a height here of your rectangle which is equal to your curve, your function which is x minus x square, yt minus yb. Remember top boundary curve minus lower boundary curve, you can utilize that. From an interval now 1 up to 3 over 2 because we have these intervals here 
we again have a circumference which is 2 pi times 2 minus x but now height is yt minus yb but the top boundary curve is the x-axis so it's 0 minus your function x minus x squared because that's your lower boundary curve when you simplify that you have here a x squared minus x everything flips now your integral will form accordingly I'm just erasing this for space my integral will be this I have from 2 pi from a 1 over 2, 1. I have two separate integrals to account for everything. I have 2 minus x, the radius and the circumference component multiplied by the height component, x minus x squared times the thickness component plus my next integral, which will be from 1 to 3 over 2. We're going from 1 over 2 to 1. The reason why 1 has been placed in between because it creates this split in your rectangles. Portion of your rectangles are above, portion of your rectangles are below the x-axis. Here we will have your 2 minus x times x squared minus x, your circumference component, your height component, and your thickness component dx. What we can do over here is open this up and we can do the factoring. We'll have a 2x minus 2x squared minus x squared plus x cubed. When we simplify this we'll have 2x minus 3x squared plus x cubed. All of that can very well fall into this place and I'll put it here. We have here a 2x minus 3x squared plus x cubed. Now if you think about it this should be no different than that except things will be changed in terms of sign but I won't skip any steps I'll show it to you. You'll have a 2x squared minus 2x you'll have a minus x cubed plus x squared. When you consolidate all of this, you'll have a 3x squared. You have here a minus 2x minus x cubed. See, everything is same except the signs are flipped. And that right there is a result of your yt minus yb here, this minus and that. Everything else was all the same. You have here a 3x squared minus 2x minus x cubed. And that right there is our integral, which can now go to the definite integral procedure. The definite integral procedure will be work because we'll see nothing here is zero in terms of our limits. It'll be a bit of a work. We can push 2 pi all out and then look at everything here. When we do the antiderivative, we have an n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. You'll have a 2x squared over 2. You'll have an x squared. Here you'll have a 3x cubed over 3. You'll have a minus x cubed. Here you have a plus x to the 4 over 4. This specific one has an upper limit 1, lower limit 1 or 2. Now when we do this, it's exactly the same. 3x cubed or 3 is an x cubed. And then minus 2x squared or 2 is a minus x squared. And then you have a minus x to the 4 over 4. And from 3 over 2 to 1. Now we have work to do. You're going to put the upper limit, lower limit in each of these cases. When you do 1 minus 1 over 4, from here you get a 3 over 4. What I'm going to do is work it all out, then I'll bring everything in cleanly. I have a 3 over 4 from here. From here, I have a 1 minus 1 over 8, which is a 7 over 8. From here, I get basically a 1 minus 1 over 16 over 4, which is a 15 over 16 over 4, which is a 15 over 64. Remember, you can do all of this on your side. I'm getting a 15 over 64 from right here, plus 15 over 64. Plus, uh, remember, I'm not ignoring anything. I'm just working here on the side from this. 3 over 2 and a 1, difference of the 2, I'm getting a 27 over 8 minus 1, which is a 27 minus 8 over 8, which is a 19 over 8. From here, I'm going to get a 9 over 4 minus 1, which is a 5 over 4. And lastly, from here, I'll get a 81 divided by a 16 divided by 4. We can do 81 minus 16, 65 over 64. Remember, again, you can do all of this on your own and verify it. These are what I'm getting in terms of all of these fractions which are coming out from here. Now let's look for the common terms. I have a 3 over 4 and a minus 5 over 4. This 3 over 4 minus 5 over 4 gives me a minus 2 over 4. Minus 2 over 4 and I'm going to remove this. I have a minus 7 over 8 and a 19 over 8 which is a 12 over 8. But a positive 12 over 8. So let's do that and let's remove this. I have a 15 over 64 minus 65 over 64 which is a minus 50 over 64 minus 50 divided by 64 and we can erase all of this and I know I still have a 2 pi sitting out here which I have to hit everything with. I have a minus 2 over 4 which is really a minus 1 over 2. Minus 1 over 2. I have a 12 over 8 which is really a 3 over 2 because 12 divided by 8 is a 1.5. 3 over 2. I have a minus half and a 3 over 2 which combine to give you a what? It gives you a 2 over 2 which is a 1. Now I really have a 1 minus 50 over 64, which is the same thing as 64 divided by 64 minus that. 
64 minus 50 is a what? It's a 14 over 64 and I have a 2 pi, this right here sitting outside. This 2 pi cancels with this and I have a 32. I end up getting over here a 14 pi over 32 which after you simplify it becomes a 7 pi over a 16. And that right there is the volume of the solid that I demonstrated to you at the very beginning. And the question has been completed. This right here is your volume with regards to your x variable, the independent variable, because everything here was with regards to dx, 7 pi over 16. And I'll put it for you right here, 7 pi divided by 16. You don't have to do a decimal answer. That answer right there is good. The volume determination has been completed. It required two separate intervals, 1 over 2 to 1. 1 to 3 over 2 and I'm going to show you right here again 1 over 2 to 1 this point and then from 1 to 3 over 2 which is this point right over here. It's slightly shallow here in terms of height and slightly higher here in terms of height because when you put everything here into the x minus x square function this x minus x square you have a 1 over 4 in terms of the height here but you end up having a minus 3 over 4 so it's 3 times as high below the x-axis and it's only 1 times as high above the x-axis but that's irrelevant information this right here is what we wanted and this is what we got thank you for watching have a nice day